Hey guys, this is Enterbox. What we're going to do today is to modify the iMac. There will be four modifications. First, we're gonna upgrade the CPU to i9-9900K. Then, the memory will be upgraded to 40GB, NVMe SSD to 2TB, SATA SSD to 2TB as well. After your subscription, we'll get right into it. First, what we're going to do is to run this rubber cutter through the edge of our screen, separating the screen and the Mac itself. It will come off without a suction cup, but it will be a lot easier with one of these. After detaching the display, it's also important to clean the remaining glue on the machine itself and the display module. Both parts might have some remainder of the glue. The display has some weight to it, so be careful when you try and take the screen off by yourself. After the separation, our Mac would rise due to the weight change. It is completely normal, no worries there. Also, we'll be putting the screen back, so be careful where and how you put it. Now, we can see how compact it is inside the Mac. Here at the bottom end, we can use the small screwdriver to screw them out one by one. And after taking the whole thing off, we can start working on the speaker module. Other from the two screws we see in the screen here, there are also some thin lining running through this piece. We gotta be extra careful with this. Here on the right hand side, we also have two screws, which we don't have to take down completely. The speaker module would come off once we loosen them. Before detaching the power supply, we'll have to separate the cable first, then get rid of the four screws there. After that is done, there are still two cables attaching the motherboard on the back. In order to take the power supply out, we need to separate these two as well. We detached all the cables one by one before we take out the motherboard. After all the cables are taken care of, we can start taking out the screws. Some of them are at tricky places, gotta be careful with that. The three screws for the fan just need to be loosened and the fan will come off. There's no need for unscrewing them fully. Before we take the motherboard out, it's better to double check for the screws in the back and on the side, so we won't end up breaking the whole thing. Once we unscrew them all, we can take the motherboard out. After that, we can start working on the heat sink. As for the processor graphics, we'll need to unscrew all the screws on the front and in the back so we can take it off. Before detaching the CPU heatsink, we have to remove the four warranty stickers. After separating the heatsink and the motherboard, what we're gonna do is to clean up the remaining thermal grease. On the motherboard, it's mainly on the GPU and the GPU RAM. Be extra careful while you do it. Don't damage other electronic components. Here, we're using the OWC 72-piece advanced toolkit to clean out the thermal grease and then use the cotton wipes to wipe it clean. The CPU is attached to the heatsink because of the thermal grease. All we have to do is to just pop it out from the side here. After taking it apart, just repeat what we did earlier. Use the OWC plastic tools and the cotton wipes to clean out the thermal grease. Then we'll get this clean GPU and we can also see the Samsung GDDR5 memory beside it. Now, let's focus on our CPU. We're about to swap out this iMac original i5-8600 and put in this i9-9900K on the right here. After this is done, it will jump from 6-core 6-thread to 8-core 16-thread. We'll also have to reapply the thermal grease. We'll be using the Thermorite TF10, it is simply the best choice. The thermal conductivity is up to 14.3 Watt per MK, which is really impressive. 
The reason why we didn't go for liquid metal, thermal paste, or to open up the CPU is because that basically iMac should not be pushing the 9900K to its limits on a regular basis since we're not going to overclock it. In this sense, a good enough thermal grease will do the trick. So there's no reason for us to use something like liquid metal and take the meaningless risk. Since the thermal grease will be applied on a ton of stuff, what we got here is a large package TF10. Apply a dot of thermal grease to every component needed, and then smooth it out on the surface. Once that's done, just put back the cover of the heatsink and it's all good to go. Now, as for the memory, we'll be using OWC memory upgrades for iMac. It is a memory dedicated to be used in Mac computers. Although there are a lot of DDR4 2666MHz memory out there, but usually Apple products are very picky. By using this OWC memory, we can be sure that we won't fail at this part of our modification. If you are running with a 27-inch Mac, it is possible to do this without ruining the warranty. Just pop it out and swap from the casing. So what we're doing here is just a reference for the 21.5-inch users. Now, what we got here is a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, the Firecuda 510 SSD from Seagate with 2 terabytes capacity, the most powerful model. The reading and writing speed is up to 3000 megabytes per second. The writing speed is even up to 600,000 IOPS, which is really impressive. This 2TB SSD is very powerful, and it has more than enough storage to be used as an OS drive. However, as what we mentioned before, iMac is picky when it comes to parts. According to our research, this will be the first iMac using Firecuda 510 as an OS in the whole world. It is possible that we fail because of this move, but let's just be bold here. If it works, it means all of us will have one more option when it comes to modification. We're about to swap out the original SSD on the motherboard and put our Firecuda 510 in. Also, in order to prevent it from overheating and hurt the performance, we prepared two pieces of aluminum extruded heatsink. We'll be refer them as metal pieces later on. We'll be attaching these two onto the SSD. We've already wiped clean the metal pieces and the surface of our SSD, and now we'll be gluing them one by one. The metal pieces we have here have two different thickness, 3mm and 6mm. There is not much room in between the SSD and the motherboard, and we have a lot of stuff to fit in, like the SSD itself, the thermal conductive film, and also our metal pieces. So we'll be using the 3mm metal pieces. By doing this, we'll be able to leave some room for the heatsink and the motherboard, therefore enable the airflow through. This will be the perfect case scenario, but actually, we have never tested it in a Mac before. Talking about perfect case scenario, we don't ever want to open this iMac again. That's the reason why we add in additional heatsink. On the other side of our SSD, the casing of our Mac, we are also gonna apply the metal pieces, which we'll be using the 6mm ones, and of course, can't forget the thermal conductive film. The overall thickness is okay, it won't make it unclosable, and the room for the air to flow is not blocked as well. Now, we can take a look at the original Mac SSD. It's made in a proprietary standard, so basically we'll be needing a M.2 adapter to connect to it. Within the OWC toolset, this black plastic stick is a personal favorite of mine. It feels so durable in the hand, even the tip of it is so tough. It's thin, but it won't make you feel like it's gonna break. And here is our SSD sandwich. Let's measure the thickness of it. It's about 14mm thick. Now, we can put our SSD sandwich into the Mac and screw the screws back in. And this concludes our SSD modification. 
followed by our SATA SSD installment. What we're gonna do first is to put back all the parts piece by piece. The SATA SSD we're about to install is Patriot P200 SSD. The capacity is 2 TB. We chose this 2 TB drive because we don't want to regret putting in one that is too small later. The P200 has a very competitive price now. The reading and writing speed is also very good. If you are also looking for an upgrade for your computer, this could be a great option. Since the hard drive of this iMac will take a 3.5 inch room, we'll need an adapter to connect the 2.5 inch SSD, so we could put it back into our Mac. Come to this part, the four key components are all replaced. Now, what's left to do is just to put these all back. Do you think we've made it? Actually, the plan was to reveal the result in the next episode, but we're too excited to wait. So here, we want to let you all know that we've done it. In the next episode, we'll be comparing the efficiency of our Mac before and after the modification. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss our new video. This is Enterbox. See you next time.